So we were brought on board to do six things. Uh, three of them we were complete with. Three of them we're not yet authorized to do. Um, we've reviewed the core's work, which we've kind of referred to as the gap analysis. We've performed some field work, surveys and geotechnical explorations. And we've also kind of looked at that western diversion of Eagle Creek and developed a preferred alignment. Not only did we review what the core had done, um, we also started to look um, at other historical data, historical events, historical floods, as well as uh, a wider range of uh, possible hypothetical floods. In April 2015, the Corps came and presented a pro project that resulted in about a two-foot drop for the 1% 100-year storm at Main Street, give or take. In August, they came back and said, well, it's actually 4.6 feet, okay? 4.6 feet gets the water level at or below Main Street, which really gets to that the revised project's objective of being able for people to pass that Main Street and other you know, roadways and egress routes, especially for emergency service personnel. Why the difference? You know, it was something we focused on very early on. Why the difference? 13,000 to 7,500 is about 5,000 cubic feet of flow. Eagle Creek can't produce that much. The most it can get with 100 year is 4,000, right? And they're only taking the 25, which is 3,000. So there's, there's a problem here. This, if you run 7,500 CFS through town, you do get that four and a half foot drop. Okay, that's, but that's not possible for the plan that they had proposed. We asked them about it, and this is what they said. Uh, this is the quote that they gave us. Basically, they made a model error. They made a modeling error. So the project we're proposing is widening the floodplain bench from the Norfolk and Southern Railroad almost down to Broad here, uh, removing um, four low-head ripple structures here, here, and here. Um, we're not recommending removing the one at Riverside Park at this point. Um, and also, um, really, the, this Norfolk and Southern Bridge is kind of a restriction for flow, so we're recommending modifying that. So a lot, of, almost all of this work could be done on property that's already owned by the city or county, and we think that that has a benefit um, not only in cost but also in efficiency. This project could move forward fairly quickly. The last thing we looked at is more traditional storage. Most people in this part of the world are more... Um, knowledgeable or understanding of stores than they are diversion channels. We looked at probably seven or eight different diversion, or sorry, uh, storage options. Uh, we looked at a few near 15. Uh, we looked at some downstream of the town of Mount Blanchard. We looked at a few on Lye Creek. Um, really, we focused on two that we felt were the most promising as providing benefit as well as being cost effective and being environmentally permittable. Um, one is on Eagle Creek, and one is up to the south of Mount Blanchard. One, and there's kind of a dual storage on the Blanchard River itself and on Potato Run. Our recommendation is alternative four, which is the hydraulic improvements, plus the Eagle Creek dry storage basin, plus the Blanchard River dry storage basin, plus the Potato Run dry storage basin. This is our recommended plan. The dark blue is the existing conditions 100-year floodplain inundation limits, okay? The red is induced flooding. So, for example, this is Eagle Creek, okay? The light blue is what the 100-year floodplain would look like if the program, the suite of projects, is implemented. I would like to draw your attention to a couple things. Obviously, there's a fairly sizable reduction along the Blanchard River in Finley. There's also a really significant reduction along Eagle Creek as you come down here. There's also a fairly sizable reduction once you move out of town and start going up the Blanchard River. There's a lot of acreage out here that is not, no longer inundated outside of town. Uh, that's a lot of acreage. 